Shamai Heather Dwe. Hey there, do me shout out um dare we thought. Tracy Girl the Mori need a video could be and my own god thought. So my young twin just mean you need it anyway. Be then young. Kanta do me shout out um but TBR on dare we thought Mishmaworth. Wedding do we just mean shout out you here? I'm a Dewithon. Chos, do you want to hear me? Dewithon, hear it. I don't think I just shout out. Light shout out. I'm a beef. Fuck. That was awful. That, I've just played that back. I just played that Welsh bit back. And it was awful. Like, I'm not going to make you listen to any more of that. I'm going to keep it in because I feel like <laughs> it's not really a whole vibe without it. I'm just going to leave it in. But, you know... I'm gonna stop it there. Let's just have real talk now, like in languages that I'm good at. So, Dewithon is in March, right? It runs from the 1st to the 30th of March, or 31st? How many days in March? I think there's 30 days in March. It runs to the end, right? And it was originally by this woman, who I don't even know if she does it anymore. Like, I'll put up all her information now. She does indeed still do it. Her name is Paula Bardell Headley, and she has a book blog called Book Jotter. Um, I will put all that information below. But I originally found it, I think, through her and through Sean the Book Maniac, who mentioned it, like, years ago. And now I'm just in love. Like, I live in Wales. My husband is Welsh. My kid is Welsh. They both speak Welsh fluently. <laughs> Whereas I have situations I'm trying to, you know, overcome in my Welsh language speaking. Um, but... I'm not even sure that those people do it anymore, that they really get into it, whereas I just think that it should be the best thing and everyone should do it because Welsh literature is fucking banging, right? Welsh authors, Welsh legends, Welsh settings, you know what I mean? So for the, like, Dewi Thorne or whatever, all you do is read, like, one, you know, book, two books, maybe all of your books for the month, who knows, that are either by Welsh authors or take place in Wales, or have to do with Welsh legends. And you may think that you don't know anything like that. King Arthur, Welsh as fuck friends. Like all of the first mentions of him anywhere in the world are in these like old Welsh epics, these like book of like, these books of Welsh stories in the Welsh language. And like Wales and Welsh stuff like seems so niche until you start picking it apart, right? Loads of super famous authors and poets and whatever are Welsh or to do with Wales, like Dylan Thomas, Welsh as fuck. Also, he was a Welsh speaker. Like, it wasn't for certain. And there were like loads of sort of, um, like reasons to believe that he wasn't actually a Welsh speaker. But the census that was just released this year, you know, they do it, they release them every like certain number of years or whatever. In the census, he's down as a child and his father has put him down as a Welsh speaker. So that's something. Uh, Roald Dahl, okay, Ken Follett, Diana Wynne Jones. So she wasn't actually Welsh, but she was evacuated to Wales in the war and like her time in Wales really like influences her writing. Like Howl's Moving Castle has like Welsh settings in it. Um, Cana Jones, Caris Davis, Sarah Waters, okay. Philip Pullman, also not Welsh, but also lived in Wales and went to school in Wales. And a lot of his writing is influenced by this sort of like, like Celtic legend sort of stuff. Uh, Bertrand Russell and Bird Pastore of Pastore time fame, also not Welsh, but lives in Wales, okay? So, you know, his one, Haybert, his poetry thing, was absolutely fucking amazing. And if you wanted to read that and you were thinking, when might I do that? Dewi Thon, mate. You should do it in March. Okay, I know what you're thinking. March. It's a very busy month for readathons. You know, you've got Irish readathon because St. Patrick's Day is in March. So is St. David's Day, by the way. I know you've got like the, the Mystery Madness March, you've got like Middle Grade March or whatever. Like there's loads of stuff, I understand. Okay, but, like let's be real. Irish Readathon, uh, does Ireland have a problem getting people to read its stuff, okay? Uh, for such a small population, they have spread their seed, okay? Something like nearly 10% of America is of Irish ancestry, me included. Okay, uh, nobody's thinking, oh, you know, what's something Irish? You know, like, oh, do we, we should really highlight Irish stuff because no one thinks of it. No, okay, Ireland is, is amazing. They have spread their seed, not just physically, but culturally, okay? Ireland is huge. Wales, on the other hand, needs a bit of a leg up, okay? It's just as amazing, but doesn't get as much attention. 
uh, mystery, mystery March, they also do that in December. It's like a cozy done in December. Just wait a bit. Do it in December. Also, the middle grade thing, like Gavin, uh, How to Train Your Gavin. He's like the king of middle grades. He does middle grade readathons all the time. They're all amazing. Do it in November or whatever the fuck when he gets his another, like, one going. Do you know what I mean? Right now, now is the time. March. Embrace the Welsh literature, okay? That's, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, I'm coming to you from the future. I was just working and randomly remembered that I didn't say um, about other people on booktube who sometimes do dare we thought or do like Welsh literature sort of things. Um, one of them is Sophie at Redhead Reading. Um, she does dare we thought sometimes and she re she reads different stuff than I would read. So hers is really interesting. I like going to her one every match. Um, also Kieran at Katie Books, like he's Welsh. And um, I think we talked about this last year for a bit that he might do something. Um, also Sean and Bert at Past Story Time they've done a bit of dough with all the past i think just just maybe sean has um and charlotte at bookish mama blooms so she's welsh and i'm pretty sure a welsh speaker but i'm not sure if she's ever done something like this i think she has read like wales related books in the past so i will link them down below if you're looking for inspiration maybe like check them out check out their backlist and stuff like that okay so just quickly i'm gonna run through my tbr for march right I've just made a stack of all of the Welsh authors and like Welsh setting books that I could find in my house that I really want to read and I've got 12 of them here which is quite a lot. Um, I don't normally read that many in a month, like I'd say the most I'd read in a month is maybe 10 unless it's like a really good month but I'm determined to spend my whole month devouring this pile so we'll see how many I get through. Like I'm in the middle of doing my booktube prize assignments <laughs> at the moment, you get like um six books that you've got to read in the space of like it's like two months it's February and March and I want to get through them all in February so that I can devote my life in March to this pile and I think it's going to work out I'm on the fourth one at the minute I've like the rest of that one and then two more and I still got quite a bit of February left so fingers crossed but this is just basically my pile of 12 books I'm going to leave them here by the window in a lovely sunny spot and then just dig from them and see how far I can go. Like, if I get all 12, that'll be awesome. If I just get a couple, you know, fine. So, first one. Hello, Friend, We Missed You by Richard Owen Roberts. A uh, poignant and comic novel about loneliness, Netflix, existing rural life, money, Jack Black, and learning to live in the least excruciating way possible. Uh, every social media completely failing to communicate, far, far funnier than it has any right to be. Basically, I've seen loads of people talk about this book on BookTube that have nothing to do with whales. Like... It's got sort of quite a far-reaching following now, I think, and I'm pretty excited about that. Next one, by Lucy McKnight Hardy, is Dead Relatives. I read another one of hers ages ago. Um, it was a bit like folk horror -y. It was like a novel, whereas this one is short stories. Um, Iris has never left the big house in the country she shares with Mammy and the servants. When the ladies arrive, she finds that she must appease her dead relatives. Various various creepy stories. I hope they're also sort of folk horror -y because those were, that was sort of like my favourite element. Okay, next one, Karis Davis, The Mission House. So I've read loads of things by Karis Davis and love the crap out of them. So she wrote West about this guy in the 19th century, like leaves his family to go looking for dinosaurs. <laughs> um, and also one, like it was like a story collection. God, I can't remember the name. I'll like put it up. But all of those stories were really good. They were about sort of like um, the American West and stuff like that. Um, this one is about India or about um, a British guy living in India. Fleeing his demons in the dark undercurrents of life in Britain, Hilary Bird takes refuge in a South Indian mission house next door to the presbytery where the padre and his adopted daughter Priscilla live. Blah, blah, blah. Meticulously crafted and tenderly subversive. I basically don't even care what it's about. It's by Karis Davis, so I'm going to read it. Next one, I heard about um, from Sarah at Your Two Shelf ages ago. And I got it ages ago. I just haven't had time to like, really delve into it, you know? But I think now is the time. It is Roseanne Alexander's Waterfalls of Stars. So it's about this woman um, and her boyfriend or husband. Um, they become the stewards of um, Skomer Island. So it's this sort of like island nature reserve type thing off the coast of, of Wales. And they've got like uh, puffins and things there. Those are the sort of like 
most famous pictures you see of the island are these puffins, just like masses of them. Um, and I think they did it over the course of 10 years. Um, they are originally just um, like dating, I think, and the guy got the job. And in order for him to move there with his girlfriend, they had to get married. Like it was a condition of the job. You know, whatever. Um, okay, then Cardiff Dead by John Williams. This is just basically a super, like, 90s, like, story of Cardiff, like, Cardiff in the 90s. Uh, if you don't live in Cardiff, maybe it doesn't appeal to you, like I do, personally. Also, I fully enjoyed the 90s. Um, the city's booming, the skyline's dominated by a new giant stadium, and the derelict docks are being reborn as Cardiff Bay. The Welsh Assembly kicks off in a welter of sexual scandal, fireworks, and Shirley Bassey. Who doesn't love Shirley Bassey? Like, I think I found this in the book hut, to be honest, and I've been loath to give it away. I'm still not 100% sure about it. If I get going through it and I'm just not feeling it, I'm going to give it away. You know, that's the new, more assertive, more practical version of myself that I'm going to be in 2022. If a book doesn't, you know, speak to me, it's going away. And that's just how it's going to be. Same with this one now, this one here. Here Be Dragons by Sharon Penman. When I first moved to Wales, fucking ages ago, I was super into stuff like this. Like... So this is historical fiction. It's about um, like a real person in the 13th century in Wales, but like um, a sort of like fictionalized uh, account of her life. So um, Joan, her name is Joan. She's like the illegitimate, illegitimate daughter of English King John. Um, and she marries Llewellyn the Great. So at the time he was the Prince of Gwynedd, like a part of Wales, and then he becomes like the Prince of Wales, like the leader of Wales. And when I first moved to Wales, I was super interested in 13th century Wales, like castles and rulers and rebellions and like all that sort of stuff. Now, I maybe have like moved off it a bit, but not so much that I can bring myself to get rid of this book without like giving it a full try. So now is the time. I'm either going to annihilate this in Dowie Thong or say goodbye to it. It's been good. It's been a nice time. It's not you, it's me. Okay, next one. Anthracite by Matt Thomas. Uh, when the underdog became the under dragon. So this one looks nuts and I cannot find it anywhere. Like I don't even think I found it properly on Goodreads. Like it doesn't have a picture or something. I just found it randomly in the bookstore um, close to my house. And I asked the person behind the desk about it. And she said, yeah, she doesn't know anything about it. And I think that's the first time that's ever happened. Like I always ask her about stuff and she's like, a fountain of knowledge, like, immediately. Uh, deadbeat Kevin Jones finds himself kidnapped to an alternative reality where Wales is the single global superpower abducted from his mundane existence by the mysterious Gwen. She tells him there are forces seeking his destruction. He has to run or die. It turns out Kevin's story holds the key to why all worlds but ours turn out the way they do. Okay, so then, the next ones are part of a series that I am slowly but surely working my way completely through, right? It's this collection of books where they're all written by a different author in Wales or an author, you know, living in Wales or from Wales or born in Wales or whatever. And they're based on the Mabinogi, which is this sort of like Welsh epic, you know, like um, these like medieval tales told in Wales, blah, 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 collected into one book, the Mabinogi. It includes the King Arthur tales and also loads of other ones. So each author was assigned or given or whatever, one of these tales um, in the Mabinogi and asked to rewrite it however they want. So some of them sort of took modern spins on it. Some of them just like very like loosely made their story connected to it in some way or they just took inspiration from it or something like that. So I've read several of these already. One I just got from Doris for Christmas. Thank you, Doris. Um, and now I have five in my house now still unread. Don't think I'll get to all five. Like I said, I'm going to try to pull as many books as possible this um, for March. But I'm going to give it a damn go. Loads of these I've read and they've been fucking amazing. Like I've never read one of these I didn't fully enjoy. And like, even if I don't, like I've read the Mabinogi, but I'm not like a scholar or anything. <laughs> like loads of it went over my head and I've like forgotten loads of stuff. But in each one of these books they have like the story they tell you the story you know so you can read the whole story in the back um 
or you can sort of like it gives you like a an overview of the story or you can just read it without knowing about the story at all or you can like look up the story first of all sort of get like a sense of it and how it applies to this one we've got the white trail by claire david um this one is based on the story how kill one old one which i don't remember actually i have to look that up uh the meat tree by gwyneth lewis uh, this one is based on oh, the story of Blow Day With, which is one of my favourite ones. It's a woman made of flowers. Okay. Uh, next one is Fountainville by Tishani Dashi. Uh, this one is based on the story of the Arthurian myth of the Lady of the Fountain. Okay. The next one is Owen Shears, White Raven. Um, and this one is based on the story of Branwen, daughter of Lear. Uh, this is also one of my favourites. I like Brown Wen. She's a bit feisty. Um, and then this one, Conan Jones, Bird, Blood and Snow. I'm excited for this one because I really like Conan Jones. He wrote one called um, Cove and also Still Aside. And I liked both of those ones. And this one is based on the story of Peredir. It's a King Arthur story. Love it. Okay, here, here's my stack. Sack I'm gonna try to get through for Dowithon in March. If you have any questions at all or comments, concerns, please let me know. Affirmation is my love language, I love a chat. Um if you wanna know like how Dowithon like works or whatever, or you just want like recommendations maybe, like you're thinking of doing Dowithon, but you're not sure what you might read, you need a bit of help, please let me know. Um if you have literally no like plans at all to do Dowithon, please let me know what else you're doing. Not like, you know, for judgment or whatever, just because I want to participate in your life. Um, and I think I will see you next week. Um, next week is actually half term, like the week off uh, for my kid in school and it's her birthday. So we have booked to go to Disneyland in California. Uh, but you know, what COVID is like, it could cancel absolutely everything. In which case, we'll just have like, you know, a quarantine birthday party in the house, which would also be, you know, lovely. Uh, so if that happens, I'll see you next week. Otherwise, probably the week after. Okay, bye, bye, bye.